Isn't it? 
to start off today by sharing an allegorical story about the power of hope. The story is told of two men who were confined in the same hospital room, one man by the window, another by the door, and the man by the window was allowed to just sit up for one hour a day to drain the fluid from his lungs, but the man who was sat by the door had to remain on his back 24 hours a day. And as the men shared the room together, they started sharing about their lives, their families, their military career, their experiences, and got to know each other very well. And during the one hour a day that the man by the window was able to be propped up, then he would look out the window and describe the scene outside for the other man in the room. And the, and the other man who was confined to completely laying on his back looked forward to that time one hour every day where they lived outside of their hospital room. For outside, the, the view of their room was a beautiful park with a pond and the children played with toy boats, the lovers walked. The beautiful skyline in the background was described in intricate detail by the man by the window. One day he described, and he said they couldn't hear it, but they could almost see the parade going by with the banners snapping in the wind and the band instruments and the marching. And he described it in such amazing detail that the man by the door could almost feel like he was in the middle of the parade. And he looked forward to this so much. Now, as the days and weeks passed by, one day the nurse came in with the bath water in the morning and found the man who was beside the window had passed peacefully in his sleep. And she had to call, sadly, the attendants. Now, after a re respectful time went by, the man who was stationed by the door asked to be moved to the bed by the window. And the nurse acquiesced to him and had him moved over. And then he, as she set him up so that he could look out the window and he struggled to sit and lean over with much pain and difficulty because it was his first time and looked out the window and saw that he was gazing into a blank wall, a brick wall. And he said to the nurse, he goes, what kind of game was my roommate playing all this time telling me these stories? And the nurse said to him, I don't know for what reason your roommate told you this, but he was blind and maybe he was just trying to give you hope. And you may have heard this story before, but the power of it is not lost. On the power of hope, that hope was what this man needed and, and his friend gave him that by describing in, in incredible detail a life outside, a life for the future, what it was going to be once they left the hospital. And that's what that man needed. And I want to talk about a little bit what hope is, because I don't think ever before has hope been needed so importantly as right now, the time and place that we live in with all that is happening around us. We need hope. We need to know what real hope is, and we need to pass it along. So let me talk about a couple of things of what hope is, real hope, because hope is more than a wish, a penny in a well. It's more than just a wish, a hopeful thought, a feeling, um, an emotion. Hope is actually a life force from God. And I want to show some things from, from God's Word here today. But first of all, what is hope? Hope is as an image of an anticipated future. Hope is an image. It's a picture of something that is yet to come. Facts, this is facts right here. Facts is describing in words, what my coffee would be like. That's the facts. This is hope. Mmm, good, good dwelling place coffee. Hope is the real thing. Hebrews 11.1 1 says this, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Now, if we look at this in, uh, in the Message Bible, I, I love how it's written there. Hebrews 11, 1 and 2, it says, the, fund the fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith, is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. It's our handle on what we can't see. The act of faith is what distinguishes our ancestors and set them above the crowd. 
See, this is what hope is all about. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things yet unseen. Hope is the power to begin to visualize where we're going from here. Like that man that was confined to the hospital bed flat on his back, you know, that the facts were is this is where he was, but hope was where he was going to be when he was leaving. The hope was that there's a world outside of what we're experiencing right now. C.S. Lewis talks about this. He said, hope is one of the theological virtues. This means that a continual looking forward to the eternal world is not, as some may modern people may think, a form of escapism or wishful thinking, but it's one of the things a Christian was meant to do. It does not mean that we are to leave this present world as it is. For if you read history, you will find Christians who did the most for this present world were those that who thought the most of the next. Hope is living fully in the present. It isn't just escapism or hiding, you know, in a closet or pulling the, the you know, the quilt over your head and, 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 you know, and hoping the world will go away. Hope is fully living in the now, but it's also in, a, in a, an expectant anticipation of what's next. What's next in the next moment from now, the next day, the next season of our life and eternity. Hope is this picture, the anticipated future. So let me ask you this. As we talk about these things, I want to throw the question back to you is I, that I would ask myself, what is my anticipated future? What is your hope right now? Where do you see yourself going? What do you see happening in your life? Hope is the anticipation of things that are happening. What's around the next corner? As you're traveling a, an old country road, the most amazing thing about that is, is that at every corner you're driving along and you're just like, I wonder what's around the next bend. There's a little bit of a rise. There's a rocky you know, cliff there. There's, 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 there's there a new mountain or a, a valley or waterfall. What's around the next corner? That's what hope is. God made us to have hope. So what else is hope? Hope is ballast. Hope is ballast in the storms of life. What is ballast? Now, we don't talk much about ballast because the, the ships that we have right, right now um, you know, are, are, are created a little different, but the ships of old, the wooden ships of old would, would have their holds filled with ballast stones. So there were river rocks of different sizes and weight they were stored in the ship's hold to enhance its stability because the wooden sailing vessels were inherently buoyant and with tall masts and sails that made them extremely top-heavy. Now, ballast stones were added underneath the surface of the water beyond where people could see. No one saw the ballast stones laid in the, in the keel of the ship. And they were added or removed as the weight and cargo or ordnance changed. It gave it stability. The more ballast, the more stability of the ship that it was this intricate balance between being able to sail and move and be nimble and to be strong enough to not be swamped and to tip over in the storms. And so I want to ask you this, what is your ballast? Because hope is this ballast. Hope is not just this flighty, you know, uh, shot of adrenaline that just, I, I feel good right now, this must be hope. Is Hope is actually a ballast stone. It's something deep within you that holds you steady in times of trouble. Romans 15 verse 13 says this, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Isn't that incredible? That God may fill you with this. That He may give ballast and stability to your life. Abound means to be richly supplied it means to be completely filled over, teeming with. <laughs> they may abound in hope. That God doesn't just give us a little dab, we'll do it, a little sprinkle, a little shot, just, just a little something to get us through. He fills us to overflow. He gives us a hope that abounds inside of us, that fills us. Does this describe you? Does this describe the, the kind of stability that people would say over your life and mine, they say, I don't know about that person, but they just, they seem stable. No matter what's going on around them, they just, they, they, they still track their course. They're still following. They're still believing what they did. They haven't, they haven't thrown this off. They haven't given up. They just, 
Keep tracking forward. That's what hope does. Hope gives you that incredible stability that doesn't matter about the storms of life. We, we, we read this week in our Lenten devotional, and I was reading this week, and I was talking in, in Matthew 4 about the storm uh, where Jesus traveled with his disciples and laid down and fell asleep in, in the hold of the boat, in the bow, and, 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 the, and there was such a fierce storm that the disciples, seasoned fishermen, thought they were going to die and woke him and said, don't you care that we're going to die? And I never really read it in this way before. And it's amazing about God's Word. You can read something so many times. I've heard that story since, since I was a little kid in Sunday school and they had the little flannel board. And, the, and our teacher, which was my grandmother, of course, you know, took the flannel board and tipped it back and forth. That here's the boat, you know, and the, if you don't know flannel board, you won't get this, but early animation here. And she tipped it back and forth. And I remember that story, but I just read it in a way that I never thought. Because I was sort of pictured in an, in an epic way of, you know, like the Lord of the Rings, you know, is that, that, that standing before Jesus stood in, it was this epic battle between good and evil and light and darkness and the storm versus peace. And, and Jesus fought on our behalf and stood in the storms. I command you. And, and I just read this in the Message Bible and it seemed instead of this epic battle where Jesus has fought and struggled in this, Jesus was almost nonchalant. He was almost, it read it in a way that made it seem that he was almost annoyed by this. Peace be still. I like the highly action-packed. I have a vivid imagination. I always thought it was that, but really, Jesus was the one that made the wind and the waves. He was the Word, was there in the beginning of creation. And when you know that, that he, you know, was there and know how this was formed, that this wasn't something he had no thought that they weren't going to make it to the other side. He already said to them, we're going to the other side. And he wasn't surprised by this. He wasn't moved by this. He said, peace be still. And he said, the wind, and the message says, the wind ran out of breath and the lake became as clear as glass. Wow. That's what hope does. Hope stays strong. It's track strong to go where your God has called you to go, even in the midst of the storm. What else about hope is important to know? Well, another point I would have to talk about that I'd like to point out is that we are not the source of hope. If I'm the source of hope, then at best it's going to be intermittent and at worst it's going to be a dry well. Sometimes when you come to me and you'd be like, yeah, I need to just, you got some hope to dispense. What do you got for me today? I was like, oh, I've got a lot. You know, it's, it's been a good week and things are flowing well and here's some hope and, and I would dispense them. And other times I'd say, I've got nothing. I've got nothing. I'm struggling. I've been dispensing so much. I've got, I haven't, you know, there's no, there's more outtake than intake. I, I'm, I'm dry. I'm done. I want to let you know is that, you know, this is actually good news, that hope doesn't come from you. It doesn't come from me. It's not just a, a positive energy. Or it's not just like I got to think, you know, proper, you know, just upbeat thoughts, you know, and, and it's not just about eliminating all the darkness so I can only think light. Hope doesn't come from us. We are not the source of hope. And that's good news. Romans 15, verse 13 to 15 says this very clearly. It says, our hope comes from God. May he fill you with joy and peace because of your trust in him. Listen to this. May your hope grow stronger by the power of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that good news? I don't know about you. That's great news because I don't have to summon up this superpower of hope all the time. It doesn't come from me. It's not just I reach deep down inside and I, I, I summon this up. It, it comes from God. The source is I tap into him. He is a source of hope, never-ending source of hope, never runs dry, never, you know, runs out, is not based on our present circumstances. It's not based on what is going on right now. Hope never fails. Psalm 119 verse 114 says, You are my hiding place in my shield. I hope in your word. There's a hope that is placed in the promise of God's word that what God says he will do, then he will do. That's an incredible promise. What a source. If we go to God for our sense of hope, then it's not based on whether or not that we're going through chemotherapy. It's not based on the fact that whether we just got our layoff slip last week. It's not based on whether our stocks and our bonds, our future finances are gone. 
Our hope is based in a God that does not change. Our hope is based in a God that is not just watching far, far from a distance, dispassionate, angry. A God that's up close and personal, that is intimately acquainted with every aspect of our life. That knows what we're going through, that understands it walks with us. The presence is as close as the mention of his name, that he cares what's going on. That's the hope we're talking about. Here's my final point. Hope is contagious. Hope is contagious. You know, as we're, you know, reading about safe practices and, and, and social distancing, you know, to, 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 to slow down the, the spread of the coronavirus. And, and we're talking about, you know, the, you know, uh, what is contagious, but also can I look on the other side for a second? Can I just turn the news page over for a second? Hope is contagious. You say, well, how can I, how can I portray hope? Well, I have to keep a six foot boundary. You know what? I had to go to the store the other day and we kept our boundary and, you know, and I, I did the tap so I didn't have to pay with cash and I walk and I could see the, the worried look on the, on the clerk's face and she looked stressed and I just looked at her and I gave the biggest smile I could and portrayed the hope of God. And, it, and with a look, with a smile, then you can say it's going to be okay. And you know what is that her eyes lit up. She smiled back. Instead of looking down and looking around and reaching for the hand sanitizer, she looked me back in the eye. And there was a connection there that was like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. We're going to get through this. That's what hope does. My friends, hope is contagious. We need to be spreading the power of hope in our world. As I shared with you last week, as if our steady diet is of just facts and figures, and, and sometimes we can get caught up. I can get caught. I have to restrict myself. I want to just, I can't help it. I'm addicted to just to keep looking at the graph climbing and to see the numbers and to just, you know, and be watching things, and, I, and, and it can grip me. But I also switch that off and switch over. You know, you can be aware of what's going on, but also switch on and be like, God, I need, actually, I don't need to be full of faith and anxiety. I need to be full of your hope. I need your hope to share with my immediate family. As we're talking with people on social media and online, we want to be able to share this hope that we have. The Bible says that we should always be ready. For what? To give a theological discussion, to give overly simplified answers. People ask all the time, is it the, the end times or what is going? Or is this the wrath of God? Or is this, you know, uh, demonic activity? Or is this just, you know, the world unraveling, you know, and, and the, the, the clock running out? And I'm not going to give you overly simplified answers. I'm not going to give you just pat thoughts. It's complex. But you know what? The Bible says we're always being ready to give reason for the hope that lies within us. It's not about me carefully art articulating my theological belief on this or convincing you with sound arguments and reasoning. You know what? I'm supposed to be ready. I'm supposed to be ready at a moment's notice to give reason for the hope that lies within me. That's what we're supposed to be ready with all the time. In a moment's notice, in a look to a coworker on an online chat, to give reason for the hope that lies within us. You know what? I just want us to continue to share this out. Psalm 43, verse 5, and, and I just love, sometimes the Psalms are so raw because they're real. You know, where they're celebrating, it's, I'm on the mountaintop, God's awesome, it's great, but they're also, you know, they're, they're also shaking their fists and going, where are you, what's going on? My life sucks. <laughs> I mean, the, the Psalms are raw. Prayers, prayers of struggle, prayers of triumph. Listen to this in Psalm 45, verse 5, and I'm going to wrap up with this. I want you to think about this. Psalm 43, verse 5, it says, Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Sound familiar? Been there? I know I have. Cast down, turmoil inside. But then what does it say? I love that there's a turning point. It's a raw it's an acknowledgement about what's happening. It's about real. It's, it's living. <laughs> but there's also that turning point. But it says, the, the, the second part, part B, it says, But hope in God, for I shall again praise Him, my salvation and my God. So yeah, there is a cast down. Yeah, there's a turmoil. But yet, 
I will hope in God. This is a turning point where the psalmist talks to his own soul, says, yeah, these are the stats. This is what's going on around me. And yet I will hope in God. What is that? See, that's more than just positive feeling. That's more than just an upbeat personality, more than just, you know, an exuberant spirit. That's a life force. The hope of God is a life force within us that, as we've talked about, helps us to remain steady during the storm. That we are contagious wherever we go. That we have an image of an anticipated future. That's what real hope is. Hope is the turnabout in our thought process or even our obsession of the uncertain. Hope turns things around. Even the the thought begin, but hope turns it around. Even though the reality may be as it starts this way, but we know that the story is not yet over. Your story is not yet over. My story is not yet over. We're partway through the chapter of an incredible part in our book, the story of your life and mine. Can I close with a prayer of Psalm 40, verse 31? And I want to pray this over your life. And if you're watching online or sharing this with friends, then then this is my prayer for you. In Psalm 40, verse 31, can I pray this over you? But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and be not faint. Those who hope in the Lord. Heavenly Father, we just place our hope in you. We know that it doesn't come from us. We can't have enough hope stockpiled in the world to get us through all that we have to go through. Lord, we know that you are the hope of our life. You are the hope of our world. Father, we place our hope and our trust in you. Thank you, Lord. Keep us steady. Show us the anticipated path forward, Lord, and let us just share this hope to friends and loved ones around us. In Jesus' name we pray. With all creation.